And, uh, and then in terms of price, well, of course, it'll be $35,000. Tesla did it. Elon did it. They made the $35,000 Tesla. Well, not exactly. There have been a lot of ups and downs, and the $35,000 Tesla is officially dead once again. We're going to talk about why this matters and what it means for the future, so let's get into it. Since the beginning of Tesla, the goal has been to make cheaper, more affordable, and more accessible electric cars. While it seemed like they were overpriced luxury cars for a while that only interested a super niche customer base who wants electric cars at any cost, they fulfilled their master plan to make cheaper electric cars. The master plan was written by Elon himself and included the steps, build sports car, use that money to build an affordable car, use that money to build an even more affordable car, while doing above, also provide zero emission electric power generation options. And just to add that Elon touch, it finished with, don't tell anyone. Well, this is exactly what Tesla did. We can debate all you want on the definition of affordable car, but they went ahead and built the original Roadster, the sports car, used the profits from that to make the Model S, the affordable car, got a little sidetracked and made the more expensive but popular Model X with the Falcon wing doors, and then they used the money from all of those to make the Tesla Model 3, which is that even more affordable car, which is their most popular car by far, largely thanks to its more accessible price tag. As we just watched, Tesla announced the starting price of the Model 3 at $35,000, but it took so long for that to actually come to fruition that most customers didn't even end up buying that model. This is because Tesla underestimated how difficult it would be to actually make this car. And essentially they did their own master plan scaled down to the Model 3. They sold and delivered the most expensive versions first and not until February of 2019. Three years after it was announced did Tesla come out with the $35,000 Model 3. It was called Standard Range. It got 220 miles on a charge, came with the glass roof, but didn't include certain premium interior features like powered seats or the premium trim. Then in April of 2019, only two months later, they discontinued this $35,000 Model 3 to a certain degree. It would no longer include those less than premium features, it would also have a different battery pack, but it would only be available to order by phone or at a Tesla store. It became known as the off-menu Model 3. Tesla's official reasoning said, quote, given the popularity of the Standard Plus relative to the Standard, we have made the decision to simplify our production operations to better optimize cost, minimize complexity, and streamline operations. As a result, Model 3 Standard will now be a software-limited version of the Standard Plus, and we are taking it off the online ordering menu, which just means that to get it, customers will need to call us or visit any one of the several hundred Tesla stores. The reason this $35,000 version only truly existed for two months is because of what Elon called production hell when ramping up the Model 3. It's well known as to how late they were delivering that car and how for most customers their actual cost was well over $50,000 with options that were kind of necessary. You started with that $35,000 price tag, but the premium upgrades were $5,000 and then the long range battery was $9,000 on top of that, bringing the reasonable 310 miles of range up to $48,000. There were a lot of other price changes, pricing structure changes, and even discontinued models like the mid-range Model 3, which got 260 miles of range. But for the last year and a half or so, you could purchase this off-menu $35,000 Model 3 by phone or in store. Now they are officially killing this option and the dream of the $35,000 Model 3 is dead. However, for the last year or so, the value of that standard range Model 3 has made no sense whatsoever for customers or Tesla, and it especially has made no sense after recent price cuts to the Model 3. Tesla now sells the standard range plus Model 3 for $37,990. This is $2,990 more than that $35,000 Model 3, or let's just say $3,000 more to keep it simple. For that $3,000 extra, you get 43 more miles of range, based on current estimates, and basic autopilot, which does lane keeping and adaptive cruise control, among other things. So while some people may want not to spend $3,000 extra, it's absolutely worth the money and makes the $35,000 version not so appealing, which I think is the main reason why they're ditching it. On Tesla's side, as we read earlier, the standard range version of the Model 3 was the exact same car as the standard range plus, 
but it was software locked, meaning that it costs Tesla exactly the same to make both cars. It has the same battery, and the only difference is the software is limiting the range and autopilot features. I think that this $35,000 Model 3 never actually made sense for Tesla, and they never really got it to work, but they made it anyway just to say that they did. So when people look forward and they say, Tesla never made that $35,000 Model 3, you can say, yeah, they did, technically. There are plenty of articles talking about how this car is gone and how the dream of this price tag is gone, which is technically correct. But we've seen Tesla continually lowering the prices of their cars. And we got a breakdown of how they plan to drop prices even more with their advanced battery tech in the next few years at their battery day event. So in the next couple years, or possibly sooner, we'll probably see the $35,000 Model 3, and it'll be much more compelling than what they originally announced. But at Tesla's battery day, Elon laid out plans for a future $25,000 Tesla. This is exciting because especially when you include certain EV incentives, maintenance savings, and gas savings, cost of ownership for a $25,000 Tesla could be far less than that of many popular cars today in that price range. But should we expect more of the same? Tesla kind of delivered the $35,000 Model 3, but it was never as good as Elon promised, and it took three years after its announcement to come to fruition. With this $25,000 Tesla, should we expect it to actually come in around $40,000 when it's compelling and has all the options you want? Should we expect it to be a few years late? Here's why I don't think so. That was Tesla's first experience ramping up a mass market vehicle. It was rocky, but they learned a lot from it. And now they have tons of customers that are happy with their Model 3s and now Model Ys. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel for a lot more videos like this. The Model Y is very similar to the Model 3 on purpose. It allowed Tesla to easily make it based on what they learned with the Model 3, and it ended up allowing them to deliver the car about six months early. This was completely unexpected since everyone knows Tesla is late. Per usual, there were some production issues with that car too, which is expected with any new vehicle and especially a new vehicle from a new car manufacturer. But now the Model Y is very common on roads. When I'm driving around Los Angeles at this point, I see about the same number of Model Ys as I do threes. And the production time on their website is four to seven weeks, showing that there is still demand, but they're keeping up with it no problem. By the end of next year, Tesla should also be producing Model Ys at their new Texas factory, Berlin factory, and Shanghai factory. So they'll be delivering the Model Y from four factories around the world, two of which are in the US, and that's not even considering the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck is by far Tesla's most popular vehicle and the primary reason for their Texas factory to be built. They need to make them fast since there are over half a million pre-orders and based on the timeline from groundbreaking to production in Shanghai, things are looking promising for that Texas factory. I still think the Cybertruck will be a bit delayed, but definitely coming by 2022. So why do we even care about all these factories? Well, when Tesla made the Model 3, they only had one factory, a factory that had made the Model S and X, which were and are far less popular than the Model 3 is. When Tesla ramps up their $25,000 model in a few years, they will have five factories making cars. And the fifth one is another US factory that was mentioned at their Q3 earnings call that will eventually produce the Semi and Roadster. And the great thing about these factories for Tesla is that they are designing them from the ground up to best suit their needs and improve the efficiency and cost of their production process by a ton. So by the time this cheaper car actually comes along, they will have had a ridiculous amount more experience making cars and scaling production of new cars like the Model Y, then the Cybertruck, then the Roadster, then the Semi. Not sure about that order, but probably all of those things will be coming out before this $25,000 Tesla. So I do still think there will be a taste of production hell with the Cybertruck ramp, but I don't think there will be for the $25,000 Tesla. On top of this, another major reason why the $35,000 Tesla never truly came to be is battery cost. Tesla has to cost cut in ways that other manufacturers don't because of the cost of the battery pack being more expensive than the cost of a normal powertrain and engine setup in the average car. Well, as we know, at battery day, Tesla laid out their whole plan for battery improvements over the next few years. They introduced their new tabless cell that gets five times the energy, 16% more range, and six times the power. 
They also talked about production improvements, cell to vehicle integration, and much more, all leading to a cost reduction of 56%. Then they laid out this new trajectory for battery costs dropping significantly over the next five years. So these battery improvements, coupled with production improvements in more factories, along with the fact that Tesla has been profitable for the last five quarters, has cash on hand, keeps breaking delivery records, and was just added to the S&P 500, those all add together to make a pretty good package for this future car. So the promise of a cheaper Tesla, it's gonna happen this time, I hope. But this brings up an interesting question for me. Typically brands in the consumer market have their own separate luxury brand. And while some will argue about Tesla's quality and overall premiumness, I think it's pretty safe to say that people consider Tesla to be a premium car company, similar to that of BMW, Mercedes, Audi, and so on. Even with the Model 3, it's still pricey compared to basically any equivalent Honda or Toyota. But with this $25,000 Tesla, they should be competing with household names like Toyota, Honda, and Ford. All three of those companies have their own separate premium brands, and while you know it's owned by them, you see the car and you go, that's premium. For Toyota, they have Lexus. For Honda, they have Acura. For Ford, they have Lincoln. And for Tesla, they'll just have Tesla for their full range of vehicles ranging from $25,000 on up to $250,000 with the Roadster. So it'll be interesting to see what Tesla does with this in the future, since a lot of companies like to distinguish that, and you know they're gonna wanna distinguish themselves from a $25,000 car on up to the Model S, which is clearly much more premium. And that is why other companies have their premium brand. But whatever they decide to do, in order for this $25,000 future EV to be truly compelling, like Elon has said it will be, it'll also need to be close to a 300 mile range, which is also something Elon has talked about. Back in July, he said, quote, with regard to passenger vehicles, I think the new normal for range is going to be, just in US EPA terms, approximately 300 miles. So I think people will really come to expect that as some number close to 300 miles as normal. That's a standard expectation because you do need to take into account, like, is it very hot outside or very cold? Or are you driving up into a mountain with a full load? And it's people don't wanna have get to the destination with like 10 miles range. They want some reasonable margins. So I think 300 is going to be really, or close to 300 is going to be a new normal. Call it 500 kilometers, basically roughly. I really love the end of that where Elon puts so many qualifiers. It was like someone before him was like, dude, you can't keep promising things you don't know you can deliver on. And he keeps realizing it as he's talking, saying is going to be, and then changes that to close to, and says 500 kilometers, basically roughly. It's all part of his charm and it's what people love to make fun of, but I think most people would miss it if it wasn't there. But in any case, he talked about this standard of 300 miles and after Tesla officially canceled the standard range Model Y, which was going to get 250 miles of range, they now only sell one car that gets under 300 miles of range. That car is the standard range plus Model 3 coming in at 263 miles. So 37 miles to go until they hit 300 in that car. I think that by the time it's released, this promised $25,000 Tesla won't fit into this 300 mile range category, but it will replace this standard range plus Model 3. Putting aside the advancements Tesla is promising with battery tech, just going back a few years, we can see that the Model 3 long range was announced at 310 miles of range, Today, the Model 3 gets 353 miles of range, and nothing has changed in regards to the physical battery pack size. Most of these upgrades have been efficiency-based in software, and we're seeing this latest jump thanks to the heat pump and upgraded cells. But the cells are the same size and form factor as before, and still being made by Panasonic, but they are more energy dense, resulting in an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. So for the Model 3, since it was released, that's a 43 mile increase in range, mostly thanks to things that didn't change the design of the car. The only design change that has helped range is the heat pump. But looking forward, we know that Tesla will always be increasing efficiency in this way, as well as implementing new cell technology from Panasonic and eventually from their own battery production lines. So by the time this new $25,000 Tesla comes to be, I wouldn't be surprised if the standard range plus Model 3 might actually be gone because it will be the same car achieving over 300 miles of range and it will no longer need the name standard range. The $25,000 car will fulfill that role in Tesla's lineup. All of this to say, 
Tesla did kill the $35,000 Tesla that they promised when they announced the car. They got in a little over their heads with that price announcement four years ago, but the Model 3 still succeeded and has allowed them to make the Model Y, which is very popular, will enable them to make the Cybertruck and eventually make this $25,000 compelling EV. This time around, it helps that they didn't put a timeline on this car or even reveal the design, so they don't have people to disappoint and they don't have a timeline to push back. But this time, I think they're going to do it. My prediction is that they truly make this affordable Tesla within the next few years, and it gets 250 miles of range or more. That's my hope and time will tell, but overall things are looking pretty good for Tesla at the moment, and I'm excited to see where things go from here. If you want a full self-driving $25,000 Tesla, that's going to run you at least $35,000, but that's a subject for another time. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe to this channel for lots more videos like this. Make sure to hit that like button if you appreciated it. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at RyanShotTech. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.